So it gives you a little bit more room to play off in each corner of the spring assembly. And that's basically it. We're ready to ride. We've decided to go with the rear dual mount spring on our Project 1969 Corvette. In order to do that, we need to drop the differential down to get access to this rear cross member. The cross member is held in by two bolts on each side. You'll need a 5 8 inch uh, socket to reach them. What you want to do is leave the front pumpkin cross member bushing bolt installed. That's going to allow this whole assembly to swing down. Danny's going to, we've already removed this bolt. Danny's going to finish removing the last bolt on the cross member. And we're going to lower it down now. It's still attached to the car up in the front. Now we have access to these bolts here. There are four bolts in the top. You'll need a 9 16 wrench to access these, and then you'll be able to remove the cross member from the differential. Once we get this cross member off, we're going to clean it up, make some marks, drill some holes in it to mount the dual mount spring mounts. Okay, you ready, Danny? Yep. All right. Okay, we are getting ready to go back in the car with the Vet Breaks and Products dual spring mount. What we've done here is we pulled the rear cross member off, cleaned it up, gave it a fresh coat of paint. We followed the instructions with the Vet Breaks and Products dual mount system. We found center. We marked our actually uh, eight holes. There's four on each side. Drilled the holes and mounted the dual mount brackets in place. These get mounted so that the bottom of them uh, tilts in towards the front of the car. So when you're installing them, you want to be able to look at it from the side and see that they lean towards the front of the car. If you've got that, you're in the right direction. Once all that's set up, we bolted it back to the differential. While we had the differential loose, we went ahead and replaced the front differential mount with a new Vet Breaks and Products polyurethane differential mount. That's in place right now. The next process is to slide this back into the stock location. Instead of mounting it with bolts, we're going to mount it with a set of studs that will go through the cross member reinforcement plate. This will help strengthen the back of the car, uh, help it hold up better to extreme duty conditions. Danny, you ready to slide this back up? Sure I am, Chris. Let's okay, we're going to press it back in place. We've now got the cross member up in place. <clears throat> We've uh, installed the studs and tightened the nuts underneath the studs. Another addition that we uh, took advantage of while we had the cross member out is we put new bushings into the cross member so all this would be fresh. The way you top this off is you slide these reinforcement washers in place. The washer, lock washer, and a nut. Once you've got the reinforcement uh, disc in place, you're going to tighten this up to 25 to 30 foot-pounds of torque. Okay? All right. All right, Danny, why don't you go ahead and get your side in. Okay, we are about to wrap up our dual mount installation on this 1969 Project Corvette. Before we could get to this point, we had to <coughs> mount the smart struts in and mount the shocks in. Now that we have those in place, our dual mounts are in place, we're going to go ahead and mount the spring. Danny, what else do we have to do from here? Well, Chris, we should just have to both hold the spring up here, slide the bolt through. We pre-installed our rear sway bar with the bend going up if you were to have a spare tire here. And uh, it looks like we're about ready to go. Okay. Go ahead and hang it up here. And right now we're going to hang it on a mild setting, the second hole from the middle. And we're also sliding the inlet bolts in at the same time. Another interesting part about this installation is that the arch on this spring is such it's not necessary to use a jack to pre arch the spring in order to mount your bolts in. So we're going to be able to put all this in without the necessity of a jack or any other uh, pressure or um, equipment underneath here during the install. Okay, now we're going to wrap up this entire Performance Plus suspension with the completion of the sway bar. The sway bar mount is unique in that it comes with this mounting nut plate. What happens is you pull the bolts from the mounting nut plate. This plate slides directly over your trailing arm. The nut plate on the bottom slides in the bottom part of it. 
you simply tighten the bolts on the top. That gives you the point for the sway bar to mount into the end link. We've got this one set up here already to give you an idea. You'll also want to place a jack underneath the end of the wheel and raise it up to get a better alignment with the end of your sway bar. Once that's in place, you take your sway bar link with a bolt on the top. You'll slide it in with the different rubber components. You'll wrap it up with the bolt and the washer on the bottom. And you'll adjust this after the car gets weight on it and sitting on the ground. And Danny, that pretty much wraps up the entire dual mount system as well as the Performance Plus. Yeah, and we come back through once we get her sitting on the ground, Chris. We'll get our desired ride height just by cranking these bolts up. And if we don't like our setting, it only takes a moment to change it, soften it or stiffen it to the how we want the car to ride. That's fantastic. Doesn't get any easier than this. Okay.